Okay, so nothing's happening. Ah, you will need to remove your jumper off your board so that you're not booting from FRAM now. And now when I press my black button, I now have the mode information displayed on the screen. I'm now downloading the information and there on termites you now see the UART has sent the information up to the terminal program. So you should now be seeing different commands on the display uh, as we had in the presentation where we will alternate between different commands on the display and you'll see different current consumptions going through on your ammeter. So I'm getting one milliamp when I'm updating the display, about 584 microamps in sleep and about 196 in low power sleep as I'm cycling around that information. And every time you get the UART, you will see the termite program will receive a section of data as it uploads to the PC. So now if we look at stop modes, so stop mode is the lowest power mode you can use where you still have full data retention. So all the RAM and all the registers, are uh, configurations and what's stored in them are maintained. Stop mode means stopped, so all the clocks are actually stopped in the device. Low speed clocks will be running if you've enabled them, so the external low speed or the internal low speed, they're completely independent of the stop mode. And now we have different peripherals that can stay active or wake the device from stop mode. So we have two versions, we have stop mode one and stop mode two. Stop mode two is at a slightly lower current consumption than stop mode one, but stop mode one has more peripherals that are able to wake the device. So if we now look at stop mode one, you can see from the screen that the uh, peripheral tree now is a lot more limited. So all the core is switched off. So we've got no activity going on the core. You can now see that the high speed clock and the multi-speed clock are now powered down. The main regulator is powered down Low speed clocks, are, as I said, are available, as is the RTC, but you now only have access to certain periphery. So these periphery can either be running or they can wake the device up. So on the right hand side, you can see all the different peripherals now that if configured can wake the device up. So this means with the RTC enabled, we're about 7.1 microamps. And without the RTC, we're about 6.6 .6 microamps. So your wake up time is around four to six microseconds, depending on if you're going from RAM or flash. And you can wake up at 48 megahertz. So you can instantly jump to the high speed internal, which maximum speed is 48 megahertz. So we now look at the next hands-on. So hands-on number four for the stop mode one. So this implementation now is based on a water meter um, with the UART wake-up capability. And here the MCU is going to use interrupts to wake it up. So we will have an external interrupt button to be able to wake the device. And the RTC can also wake the device and you can send a serial command down to wait the device. So our flow diagram will run and initialize everything. 
Then we'll service all the parameters and then drop into stop mode one and wait for one of the various interrupts to come along to service all the parameters again and then drop back into stop mode. For this application, we're going to use the clock source at 16 megahertz. And what we have going on in the application, we have our function change, which will be up, down, left and right on the multifunction button. And to increase the count, so um, to simulate flow of water, we will push down on the button. So we will drop into about 6.3 microamps while we're in the stop mode and then wait for one of the events to happen. So you watch the multimeter and one of these various events will bring the device out of stop mode. So if we go and open our next example, so again, still in section one, but example number four, water meter stop one. So I will remove my termite. I'll close my existing IAR example. And go back to section one and open stop mode one. Load the project. Our new project. So if I F7 to build, okay, my configuration is already up to date. And now if I project download and download active application. I now press my reset button on my target board. My screen is now showing me that I am down at 0, 0, 0, 0 liters. I will need to change my multimeter now to go down into the microamp spectrum so I can actually see a reading. My meter now is showing um, in the microamps about three and a half microamps, so it's actually lower than what we're showing on the slide. I will have to turn it back to the milliamp region when I press a button because uh, when the device goes back into the run mode, you will be running up in milliamps. So every time I press the button, I can see that the button interrupt is jumping me up to about 100 and 400, anywhere from 100 to 400 milliamps so that I'm simulating the pulse count. And then you will get the same increase as you switch between the various modes so that your display will show the serial number and the average flow rate. So you will still see a change on your ammeter at that point. So if I now leave it stable for a bit and don't press any buttons, then the RTC interrupt will come along and that will refresh the screen. So you will see a jump on your ammeter when the RTC interrupt fires. So I think you have to wait about one minute, if I remember correctly, before the RTC will come round and trigger an interrupt um, and then you'll hopefully see a second interrupt going on apart from the button press 
that is on the board. So there we go, I saw my screen then jump from about so many uh, microamps up to about 140 milliamps then. So, so the RTC triggered the uh, ammeter uh, as it put the device back into its run state so that it can service the volume and update the LCD. So, so my external button interrupt works and the RTC interrupt works. Through the terminal program we can send a command in which should send again the device through to the um, run mode from the stop mode. So stop mode number two is the lower current consumption. But as you can see on the right hand side, we've lost some of the periphery now. So there's less events able to wake us up. And on the left hand side of the screen, you can see a lot less peripherals that are available to run in the stop mode number two. This means that we can now get down to about 1.7 microamps with the RTC running and about 1.2 microamps without the RTC running. Slight increase in your startup time. So rather than four to six, we're now at five to eight microseconds but we can still jump straight to 48 megahertz of uh, processing power uh, within the application. So the next hands-on, so this one now is doing pretty much the same as we've just been through, uh, but this time we've only got the RTC and the button uh, triggering our water meter for our flow diagram. Um, and you can enable or disable the LCD in this mode to reduce the current even further. So it's just the same as exactly the same as before, uh, but this time we will be down a lot lower. So we were around six and a half microamps. Uh, I think my board was showing about three-ish microamps. So this one now should be down at least two microamps. So if we go and open example number five, then we will be able to see a slightly same example but slightly lower current consumption configuration. So I'll close my IAR again and go into example number five. Open the project EWW. F7 to build the project. Again, mine is already built. So now it's project, download, download active application. Program the board. There we go. So now when I press my black reset button, my display is lighting up. And now if I put my meter into the microamp area, I'm now down at about 1.9 microamps for when we're in stop mode. As soon as you press the button, you will still jump back into run mode. So you'll still jump back into the run mode where you're up at the hundreds of milliamps again. But now we're down a lot closer to this two microamp area. So my LCD has now automatically switched off um, and I'm still sat around the 1.99 to two microamps area. So all because we're in stop mode number two, you can reduce the current consumption again slightly more from what we had in stop mode number one. So here's the comparison of the two stop modes. Um, everything's taken at 25 degrees and three volts here. So you can see, you can save about 
five microamps uh, without the RTC running just between stop mode one and stop mode two which depending on what you're doing in the application could be significant especially if you're running from a battery the wake up time that you've got between those two different stop modes is not that significant one two microseconds difference so so again the wake up time isn't really impacted because stop mode is the same it's just the number of peripherals that are there your wake up clock is identical so you can instantly jump to 48 megahertz and you have a selection of common peripherals which are always available and then the more complex peripherals are different between the two different versions of the stop mode so it provides you with a lot of flexibility depending on what you need within your application so after stop mode we then get into standby mode so this is the lowest power mode that you can use where you still retain some information in your SRAM so we can now get down to about 150 nanoamps if we're not retaining the SRAM uh, so again it depends on what you're doing and we've now got five wake-up pins that can bring us out of this so standby mode there's no peripheral registers retained so we are down now to the wake-up pins only that we can bring the device out of standby mode so if we now look at what's available to us so the SRAM as I said is optional you can either have with or without the SRAM all the peripherals now are powered down apart from the two peripherals that are running from the low speed clocks if you've enabled them independent watchdog RTC and now your wake up events are a lot more limited so so you've got the wake up pins anything with the RTC or the tamper detect if you've enabled it and then the uh, independent watchdog but this means without the SRAM and without the RTC we're now down at about 150 nanoamps um, available to us so if we have a look at an example on standby so again we're back to a data logging application so we're logging long-term temperature information and what we do here is we enter the application uh, configure all the peripherals service the ADC and the LCD then drop into standby every time the RTC wakes us up we come back through the reset reconfigure do our ADC log the information and then go back into standby again so this is all done using a 4 megahertz clock and what we will see on our display is what happens every time we wake the device based on the RTC triggering us. So every 10 seconds, the MCU wakes up, will perform the task and go back to sleep. So you'll see the temperature reading, you'll see how many times you've woken up, and this means we can get down to an average current consumption of around 900 nanoamps in this one because we are maintaining the SRAM to keep a track of all our data variables. So if we now open our example number six, the long-term data logging example. So I can close my IAR and go back into the example. So example number six, uh, EWARM project EWW so there's our example if I build the example F7 my configuration is already up to date and if I scroll down you can see what we're actually doing in the code so we enable the SRAM content so that we can retain the information. Uh, increment our log buffer. Disable all the 
all used wake up sources, clear all the wake up flags, enable the wake up pin that we're going to use or the wake up source we're going to use and then enter the standby mode. So and that's all we do. And then we will just come round when we exit standby, we'll come back for a reset we'll, and we'll come back and re-execute all this information again. So if I now program the board, so project, download, download active application. So my board is now programmed. So if I now press my black reset button, so it briefly told me the temperature then before it went to sleep. I'm now down at 970-980 nanoamps. 10 seconds came round again. My screen briefly flashed up the cycle count and the current temperature reading. And then it keeps going round that loop. So this is just a very, very simple loop using the RTC, using the 32K of SRAM to store the information. And it keeps going round standby and then through the reset, reconfigure, update the log, drop back into standby mode. So again, a very low powered data logging um, application. So yes, yeah, so you will briefly see on the, your screen as it cycles around the uh, loops, you'll see the cycle count and the current temperature reading that's being logged. And finally, the last power mode is the shutdown mode. So again, very similar to standby, but now we've removed some of the power monitoring, the brownout reset and the switch over to VBAT pin. Uh, we've got no LSI enabled now in this example and no independent watchdog. So the only backup we have are the 128 bytes of backup registers. And again, your wake up sources are the pins or the RTC if you have enabled it. So this is what our picture looks like now. So we only have the RTC running off the LSE if you enable it. And then your wake up events now are the reset the five wake up pins and RTC and Tampa if you have enabled it. So this means we can get down to, with the RTC running to provide us regular wake ups, about 550 nanoamps. If you just want to use the wake up pin, we can get down to about 60 nanoamps on this one. So, so we've got a very good low power consumption mode here with shutdown. So we now have a look at our example. So we're going back to our water meter example again that we used in stop mode number two. And what we're doing here is the MCU will enter shutdown mode to make sure the battery or the power source on this device lasts as long as possible. Then when the button is held down for at least two seconds, then the MCU will start executing and run example number five as its continuous loop. So this is a very good way of using the, a battery powered application that potentially could end up sitting on a shelf for months to years. Um, but there's no way of being able to um, attach or re-trigger the device. So normally a water meter, because it's going to get buried underground, at manufacturing it'll be sealed so that no moisture can get inside the unit. So at manufacturing this is when we would enter it into shutdown mode. So we've connected the battery but we're not actually doing anything. And then when the installer puts it in the ground for us, we're using the button to signify the flow. 
on this one, the impeller and the flow of water will trigger the um, counter to start moving and then that will start the application off where we cycle between run and stop for the rest of the uh, lifetime of the product. So what we have here, we have to uh, completely discharge the board first and then we will press and hold the button for the two seconds for it to then start executing its um, example number five again. But right at the start, we should be able to see if your ammeter will run that low, the, uh, the nanoamp um, range. So if we go and open the last example, example number seven, Close the previous example. Let's go into example number seven. Uh, project EWW. If I build the project, project built. And now if I go project, download, download active application. There we go. So everything's now programmed into my board. So for this one, I will now completely disconnect my power source. So I have to disconnect my USB mini cable.